we had a whole bunch and i mean like six check engine lights the other day when i went to go check the passenger side what it did was it melted inside <laughs> Clue. This thing's got a light on too. Pretty sure I know how to fix this one though. The bike, I have no idea. The Mustang, it's in the air. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. The bike is apparently gonna have to I have to go check that out, but the Mustang is actually down right now. But this is gonna be an easy fix, hopefully. I don't know, we'll find out. Oh man, why does this keep happening to me? Seriously, um, don't get it. It's had a, like real bad like gas consumption issues and um what else oil consumption has been real bad like in a month it'll eat like you know five quarts of oil so um try to look at the pvc this is the old one it broke coming out this thing is you know it's a very old it's an 04 grand cherokee so went to the store got one of these this is a direct replacement for like six or seven bucks we'll solve our issue over here on this side so on these grand cherokees right there is your pvc so i don't think that this one was where's the other piece <laughs> i don't think this one's bad it still goes back and forth you can clean these up but i mean this thing is an 04 it's 2020 now so you do the math but this should fix that now on this side i've never had this off i pulled this out and this was broken i don't know how this is probably why whoever sold me this thing to begin with maybe it just threw a light and they couldn't figure it out and they weren't mechanically inclined so you figure things out you just start pulling stuff apart until you find it i don't know if it's a t though i gotta reach my hand back down here and see if it connects somewhere else i gotta do a little research but on the off chance it's not i have uh just went and bought some hose so for the time being so i can take the hose we can run it back here just for a temporary fix. All right, slide that on. Uh, this is gonna go back in the location once we actually get our plastic doohickey thing back here. So it'll go in this location. So there's a little catch on here, little lip. So, all right, it's a tight fit. Get on there. Shove it down and give it a twist. A little precision going in there. Oh yeah. So that's solid this up back again bam brand new pvc if you have a pvc that's clogged up or it's just need to be replaced uh this is a, a common symptom is oil consumption uh things aren't right the, the crankcase pressure needs to be you know correct that was obviously a problem maybe but this one over here is the bigger problem so that's cleaned out i cleaned that out earlier and then we got the right size yep so it fits on there like that and then we can put it back together that will go there and then that will do it for the jeep hopefully this will fix our issue so obviously yeah we had a big problem crazy that i pulled this and it was like that she's done Let's see if we fixed our problem i don't know we ran the code before and it said it was a vacuum leak so let's just see and uh still have a check engine light so maybe that'll go away once we start driving it i don't know so I took her for a spin around the block. Check this out. So we'll fire it back up. And look at that, no check engine lights. All right, so here we are day two and the Jeep is still going strong. No check engine lights. So I'm so happy that uh, we got that fixed. A little bit of weight off my shoulders. The bike is crazy though. So we went to the dealership and these don't have, it's not like a car where you can just plug in like an OBD2 port. I uh, went to the dealership. They were like three or four weeks out from unfortunately being able to read a code, which is kind of crazy to me because you're supposed to just plug it in, read a code, I would have fixed it. We do have a slip on. We have this uh, cheap M4, yes. Uh, eventually want to upgrade that but you know it was like 150 bucks. So I have a servo body which is going to delete the check engine light because we delete the um, the flaps in the exhaust. Why would we have a check engine light? I don't know, because when we came out from the dealership, I was gonna go back the next morning, they were gonna allow it. Came out, started the bike right up, and no check engine lights. So, I don't know if it was just a bad tank of 93 gas. You know, it was winter recently, so I have a sneaky suspicion that it might be 
the battery just a little bit low. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to test this and this is what we're going to use to do it. So we have a couple of products here and I've used this in the past. I've highlighted it on the channel, but I want to show you guys real quick before we move on. It is a little air compressing for your tires. I want to say, you know, especially compared to the OEM ones that come with these Mustangs, this thing charges or charges. It puts air back in the tires like extremely quickly. I've been very, very impressed with it, but we're going to get to this. This is a battery charger and this is supposed to be a little bit different than some of the other stuff out there but pretty cool you know they saw that i was making content with this so they reached out and they're like hey alex do you want to make another video and uh, we're going to send you something special i was like cool just send me whatever you got they sent me this and i was like this is so sweet because i actually need this so big shout out to i do links in description so we're going to get to the mustang in a second there's pieces everywhere the car is down right now just keep watching we're going to get to it and uh, i think it's gonna it's gonna shock you a little bit what we found just to get the bike done with the check engine light did go away but i want to confirm look at this this is nice this packaging so i own a ton of tools and for whatever reason i've never had a battery charger but this one is a little different so jump starter it's a power bank it's got a flashlight so it's got like usb outlets back there there's a light right there so we're gonna put this together and charge this battery up because i think that is the culprit with the motorcycle and then we're gonna move on with the mustang and when you see what i found on that mustang it is going to just absolutely shock you pretty cool that it comes with a flashlight we're really gonna come in handy if you were stuck on the side of the road for whatever reason and you need something like this but look the size of my hand my iphone i mean about the same size there so very small very convenient you can just shove this in your glove box which i think is pretty cool and that's probably where i'm going to keep mine because you never know when you might need it there's the light check that out that's oh that's super bright i'm impressed it's, uh it goes in right there should just slide in gives a nice little click all right so we got it connected we got three indicator lights here we have a green light there so it does give you instructions on the back so follow those and don't mess it up green light on start the engine all right so it's fired up we'll know pretty quickly because this bike has been not wanting to start very well in the mornings there we go shout out go check them out links in the description got special affiliate codes for you guys but we're gonna move on with the mustang now show you what's up because there is part of it there's a bunch of stuff down there there's a wastegate so what in the world has happened to this thing well we had a whole bunch and i mean like six check engine lights the other day pretty crazy for everybody that is new this is a twin turbo car performs very very well capable of quite a lot we also have a lethal performance fuel system here for e85 so we can get all of that power have safe fueling and everything something i've been keeping off of the channel because i just didn't want to highlight something that was bad without possibly knowing a fix or a cure is we've been fighting fuel trim issues so short term i've actually got down quite a bit but the long term we have been having a horrendous time with long-term fuel trims. I think I figured it out. Hopefully by the end of this video, all of my check engine lights will go away and our long terms will come down. Short term is good for on the fly. So under wide open throttle, it's always gone about zero, which is good. You don't want more than positive 10 or less than positive 10. You wanna be as close to zero as possible short term. Now, you want long term to mimic as closely as possible. Generally at idle is when I've been seeing the problem. Symptoms of that really are a vacuum now I took this whole mess here everything off the top of the engine off the other day chasing possible vacuum leaks it is a turbo kit so it is possible we've done this we've done that we've been trying to troubleshoot the problem before I came public about it and said specifically what it is or what it's not 100% not a vacuum leak changed all the boost lines checked all the cold side piping I've checked this I've checked that check gaskets under here gaskets there everything and this is what I found so the one thing that I never 
never thought to even check. And it's just crazy because this should have been like the first thing that I did was your wide bands, your O2 sensors, your front ones specifically. Driver's side was completely fine. When I went to go check the passenger side, this is what it looks like, right? Well, no, I'm sorry. This is the, this is the wrong one. This is the wrong one. Where's the other one? There it is. Here's the driver's side. And they look like they are about two years old and have had different kinds of fuel through them, but they still relatively work. Now, the thing though is they don't always throw codes, like if these aren't working, if they're on their way out until they're dead. That's one of the reasons I thought that uh, maybe these would never be an issue. They're getting replaced. So as soon as FedEx gets here today, uh, new ones are going in. Now, this was inside of the plug. When you look at them, you see all this right here where it clips on. I had to break all of this off to get it out and then basically plier that thing out. What it did was it melted inside right here. So I uh, talked to a buddy of mine, a determined veteran. You guys might know his YouTube channel. Um, we're actually getting ready to boost twin turbo his GT350R here probably in the next week or so. So get ready for that content. But what can cause this? So we determined that it was not heat from the turbo header, anything like that, because we did have it out of the way. We had it heat taped up. I don't know what in the world caused this. Some kind of like a, an electrical problem, something grounded out, something went wrong, and it melted internally. Lucky for me, the main plug is still good, but for whatever reason, this did not survive. And I would bet money that this is the problem. This wideband is going crazy. The codes that I've been getting are bank one lean and then active exhaust and some other stuff stopped working because the car is just having a fit. And it's been getting progressively worse and worse. We could not figure out fuel trims. It makes no sense. Other people are running this same kit right here, these regulators, this turbo kit, all of this other stuff. Why in the world are we having problems? And this would explain quite a bit. Soon as FedEx gets here, we're gonna unbox it, we're gonna install it, we're gonna reassemble everything and uh, show you what it all looks like. Don't know how this happened. It could have been like this for a long time. I have no idea, but we're gonna fix that today. But this is pretty crazy to see. Okay, making some progress. Alrighty guys, we're underneath the car. We are wrapped up. We got the O2 wide band for the driver's side and also for the passenger side. And I've basically just heat wrapped the mess out of this stuff. So, uh, this wrap goes all the way up past the header. So just in case we have any problems. We didn't before, it was some kind of a, a short or some kind of electrical issue uh, that we can need to diagnose. But just check our connections everywhere, all over the car, give it a once over. This car has been apart a few times, so it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, that's where the uh, issue came from, but that's pretty much it. So it looks good there. Everything's buttoned up underneath the car. We're gonna drop it now. Get this thing fired up. Hopefully uh, we have solved the issues. This is a moment of truth, really. I'm trying to go fast, but it's been fighting me the whole way. Hopefully, because I'm determined. Everything's uh, buttoned up. Got fuel plugged back in. I'm gonna go in here and uh, reset cam. Prime the fuel pumps and uh, clear any codes that exist. Reset PCM cam successful we had lean codes before i don't know where they went all right start to ride up that's good now we're just gonna watch our fuel trims we're probably gonna have to go for a drive to do this and just watch and log send everything off to palm beach dyno to let rob take a look at it make sure everything is good to go yeah fuel pressures are fine that's exactly what you want about 58 and then 50 should be good to go it's been raining so we're gonna let this sky dry up a little bit and then uh i guess go for a ride but 85 love it chop 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 <laughs> Thank you. 